Hi, and welcome to the We've Got a Problem podcast. I'm Andrew Wallace, and today I'm talking to Fiona DeMarc. She's an inspirational speaker, executive trainer, resilience coach, who focuses on providing practical strategies that can make a lifelong impact upon participants. What sets her apart from other resilience coaches is the fact that she's actually had to practice what she preaches. She's been legally blind for quite some time, I think since birth, and it's been a bit of a trying time and something that's probably programmed her to be a better and more resilient person on her own. Fiona, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Andrew. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, I alluded to it a little bit in the introduction, but uh, you, you're you going to need to give us some background. How did you come to be a resilience coach? Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get into that just a little uh, bit. What, what brought you story. here? <laughs> so um, I guess it it came in little steps and as things do, like I think, you know, you get thrown into things and you don't really realise that you're doing them until you sort of, you know, look back with a bit of perspective. So um, I guess I realised when I was a teenager and going through quite a tough time with, um, you know, just general teenage stuff like you know you're trying to build your identity and you're trying to sort of you know carve out that place in the world and doing that with a disability and negotiating how that all you know is going to pan out when there's people telling you that you can't do the stuff that you think you might want to do and I think that I got to the point where I kind of hit rock bottom and then worked out that it was um you know that that was the foundation to start building upon again and that at that point in time, I realized that I had the capacity to help others. And it's not until I look back now that I realized that I started doing that sort of, you know, when I was 16 or so and, and decided that my life was sort of going to be dedicated to, I guess, using my own story to help others. And it only became sort of, you know, clear with that, that hindsight, I guess. But yeah, it started, sure. started I mean, back as, as a teenager. There, so, so you've been doing this, this for a while. You've been been coaching people through stuff. I mean, uh, there's, so I I would, I do want to talk about a couple of things before we really get into it. And one of them is that you're legally blind, right? Blindness Mm -hmm. is a spectrum. It's important for people to realize that it's not like a binary situation. It's not, you are, you aren't. There's a whole level of things. How much can you see? These days, um, (laughs) this is the thing too, is it gets to a point where, you know, you can't read the, the chart in the doctor's surgery anymore. And so then they have special low vision charts that are like 10 times bigger than that one that most people are used to seeing. And once you can't read that anymore, either it becomes very difficult to actually put to sort quantify of, it. Right. Yeah, exactly. But I guessing um, like you, at my assumption, probably less than 10 percent. So, um, yeah, and it has has gotten worse as I've gotten older. So I've sort of had the experience of that spectrum, I guess. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 been a gradual thing, which has been great because it's allowed me to adapt along the way as well. Well, that's and something that that perhaps a lot of people don't necessarily have with with certain disabilities, with mm. where, where where there's there's less of a, a period of adaptation. It's just mm. you have yeah, right. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly, and and of course, I, I the having having time is something is a luxury that 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 a lot of people don't have. Uh, particularly people who are physically disabled, things like that, where where it, where it can happen suddenly. So you did have that luxury, but it still makes it much more difficult, perhaps, to, to, to deal with something. So many of us will experience setbacks, but only have a glimmer of what it's like to deal with a disability. Mm. That doesn't mean they're not setbacks in, in the time and that, that the lessons that we have to learn don't don't apply right that 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 the things that you have to teach don't only apply to people who are experiencing massive life change even a setback in in business or losing a job or or being passed over for for a promotion can be a sense of adversity so how do we better deal with these these moments big and small what's what are some tips that you've got for the audience I think it's about acknowledging that, I mean, this is life. Like, you know, we're not always going to have a smooth 
smooth run and get all the things that we hope we do in life. And, you know, to be honest, if that happened, life would actually be probably very boring because, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't yeah. get to <laughs> we wouldn't get to experience the highs as well as, you know, having that experience of the lows. And so, you know, just as easily if you get yourself a promotion, well, you know, that wouldn't feel as amazing as if if you just kept on doing the same thing all of the time either. Right. Right. So I think it's about, you know, I guess understanding that these things are going to happen and you're the one that's in control of the way you react. And so taking, I guess, a bit of accountability for your own um, reactions to the situations that you're faced with instead of blaming other people and blaming the situation, actually think about, okay, well, this is this is my space to be able to be a little bit sad or a little bit angry or a little bit whatever that emotion is for the time being. But then to acknowledge that and say, okay, well, now I've experienced that, it's time to move on and to actually take accountability for saying, all right, my next step forward is going to be something different and then start investigating what that is. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, the the sense of perceived lack of control is, mm. a, is a big one, right, that, that people struggle with and go through, you know, just something happens that's out of your control, right? And, and you can sit there and be be upset with it or, or, or mope about it or, or just wallow in the failure, let's say that was out of your control. What is in your control is what you do with it and how you, how you move forward from it, right? Have your moment, take your, take your moment. I, I had a guest uh, a while ago who was a voiceover artist, a voiceover actress, things like that. And she said that, that failure or, uh, being passed over for a job is so common. You you don't get the job. You don't you you submit the audition. You do all these things, and and you get invested in these. You just like applying for for jobs that we all do, where you're sending mm-hmm. out a resume and you you get your heart set on something and then it doesn't happen and it and it's a setback. It 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 feels bad. But she said, look, I give myself ten seconds. I give ten seconds of like that really sucked. That was horrible. And she goes, honestly, ten seconds. And it's like, all right, I'm done. Next one, let's, let's, how are we going to move on? What am I going to do with that? How am I going to go forward? How can I make sure that this, try and make sure that this doesn't happen or, or what can I do to change or how can I, how can I optimize or, or, or what can I do with that? And sometimes it's nothing, right? Hey, I can't do anything about that one thing, but Mm -hmm. what I can change is how I perceive it. Yes, 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 absolutely. So, I mean, the part of the question is how can we, how can we do better? Right. How how has how has tapping into your own inner reserve of resilience helped you helped you thrive, helped you seek adventure, those kinds of things? Tell us some stories. I think it's it's about, you know, having that mindset of just switching and going, you know what, if there's something that I can't do, there's plenty of things that I can do. And I think many times it is about just taking that chance and going outside of your comfort zone and doing something that is just that little bit unusual and, you know, not being concerned about what other people are thinking, just doing things for yourself. And I think that that's the basis of resilience in the sense that, you know, you you stop behaving according to what other people want you to do or expect you to do and actually just going and doing the things that you really love and the things that make you happy and the things that are, you know, using your unique gifts and tools. And so for me, I guess I do have a sense of adventure. And so although I've got a disability, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can't go and experience that adventure. And so, you know, people might think, oh, you know, you shouldn't be doing some of those things that are, (laughs) you know, probably dangerous to start off with, but let's just add in the fact that you can't see what you're doing as well. It sort of adds a whole new level to it. But but where's your sense of adventure? Where's the sense of excitement? So what? Let's go. Let's do this. Well, and part of it is why let that stop you, right? Mm. You go, well, yeah, it's dangerous to begin with, but. Other people are doing it. That's so, right. <laughs> and I want to do it. I want to yeah. go. I want to travel. I want to do whatever. So, I mean, that's, I guess that gets into a little bit of if you could give a piece of advice to to somebody facing any kind of adversity. I mean, beyond just disability, but but any of those things, or or even to your younger self, would, would it be to, to say, just get out, get outside your comfort zone? I mean, is that kind of your... 
your big piece of advice to your younger self? What would you tell a younger yeah, version of yourself you wish so. you? I think you know. the biggest thing is you know, stop worrying about what other people are thinking yep. about you and, and, you know, do what you need to do for yourself. And, and yeah, to stop being comfortable. So, so many of us, oh, I just want a comfortable life. But when you think about a comfortable life, that becomes to me a little bit of a boring life, I think, because it means that you're doing the same thing all of the time and you're not going outside of that comfort zone and not experiencing something different. So I think, you know, to, to really experience life, you have to be outside that comfort zone. You have to be doing something that's different. You have to be you know, pushing yourself. And there's a certain level to pushing yourself. I mean, you know, you don't want to go to do something, you know, ridiculous that is, you know, so far up the other end of the spectrum from what you would normally do that it's it's sort of, you know, a point where you're fearful, but right. to the point where you just go, you know what, this just doesn't feel quite good, but right. I'm okay with it still at the same time. Yes. I had a guest on the show and I've referenced him time and time again. I'm sure my listeners are tired of hearing about it, but Kevin Palmieri from Next Level Minds talked about being in your comfort zone, your learning zone, and your anxiety zone. Mm. And nothing happens in the comfort zone, right? No. Nothing. No, you're just there. It's just, it's the same. It's it's blah. You, you know what it's going to be. Mm. And and it might even be a psychological phenomenon to 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 never want to get out of it and 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 to to have your comfort and your anxiety zones right next to each other where there is no learning zone for, for the most of us there's that level where you go i'm not comfortable but i'm mm. also not super anxious about it mm. right i that that because once you get into the anxiety zone now you you you're not taking in new information you're just yeah it's fear right it's total yeah. fear yeah. So, but being in that and being in that learning zone, and what what talking to other guests, I've I've really formed the idea and 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 crystallized it that the the learning zone moves right that that you might then get comfortable being out there mm. doing that thing that was previously a little bit uncomfortable, and yeah. so you've got to keep bumping up against yeah, exactly. where the anxiety yeah. zone is to keep to keep doing it, keep pushing your boundaries just a little bit, mm. and. Like you said, I mean, that I, again, I totally agree that we have to have the lows to appreciate the highs. You have to have those moments where where things are different, where where you've got something else that 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 because if it's if it's all the same, if it's all whatever the level is, we're almost going to adapt to it. Do you 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 adapt to a high level of energy or yes. or or whatever, and then to to not have those moments of silence or stillness or or whatever, then the peaks and the valleys, I suppose, make the mm. make the spice mm. of life. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about your coaching process. You're an executive trainer. You're a coach. You're an inspirational speech speaker. What is your kind of coaching process like? Who's your ideal client? Where's your sweet spot? Yeah, I work with quite a range of people and I guess the the sweet spot is where people are wanting to change. So (laughs) where people are no longer happy with that comfort zone and they want to go into the learning zone and to be in a spot where, you know, they know what is happening for them isn't, isn't working for them right now. And then to, I guess I always individualize my coaching to that specific needs of the person. And, you know, we sit down and we go, okay, well, you know, where are you now? And really reflect upon that and reflect upon the things that have created that current situation and then move forward and say, okay, well, now we've got all of these things that we've collected as a, as a, an answer to, sort of what's created the now situation. Now we know that they're potentially your barriers, your obstacles for moving forward. How do we now change those ways of thinking or overcome those obstacles to get to where you want to go? And so I really sit down and clearly work out, well, what are the future goals? And, you know, break those into small pieces so it makes it easier for people to be able to then reach those goals by overcoming those things that they've identified that are stopping them from getting there right now. Yeah. I mean, having a, having a plan, having just having somebody to work with, right. Having a coach, somebody to bounce things off of and go, here's what I'm thinking. And here's where I think we need to go. And you go, well, okay, we need to, let's, let's break that down a little bit and find a way to get there together. 
because so often we all have these ideas, this, these grand plans. And I, I mean, I, I think there are lots of lots of people who go into situations just I, 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 I have this vision. You go, great. How are mm. we going to make that happen? Yeah, I, I want that for you. I want you to be successful. I want you to thrive. I want you to be happy. I want you to 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 rule the world. Great. How are we going? What steps can we take right mm-hmm. now? How can we take massive action to to make that happen? Yes, 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 yes. And that again, most people don't they they don't get the planning period right. They 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 just want to try and jump in or or jump from 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 task to task or moment to moment and mm-hmm. and and do it. And uh, that can oftentimes result in it's that that old thing, which says that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting Mm -hmm. a different result, (laughs) which it it is and it isn't right. That the definition of insanity is not that you can look it up, but that's not what it is. The, the, but it is certainly a way to give yourself the same kind of situation. You're going to get the same result out of it. And that's oftentimes what's put people in the situation that they're seeking your help in the first place. Right? Absolutely correct. <laughs> because what happens quite often is, you know, if, if it's not working for you and you're doing the same thing, then next time you do that same thing to get to the, the goal that you want to do, it then becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy of, oh, yeah. well, look, see, I told you I couldn't do it. And because it's it's doing that same process without having the the planning and the structure and things behind it. Because, I mean, sometimes it is about making sure that, okay, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, I need to have some kind of structure behind whatever it is that I'm, I'm trying to do. So, you know, the perfect example is, um, you know, I work a lot with getting, um, you know, people into employment, for example. And, you know, there's no point in saying, hey, well, I want to have a job if you don't have that structure of, okay, well, my my self-care routine is going to support me having a job. So if you sleep in until 11 a.m. and and stay up until 2 a.m., you aren't, you know, eating properly, you don't sort of, you know, do your your general self-care, translating that into, okay, well, I need to be presentable at, you know, 8.30 a.m. to to be, um, you know, attending a workplace is just totally outside of the realm of what's possible. <laughs> so, you know, it's a it's about setting up that structure and going, well, you know what, you you probably, you know, you can go and get a job. There's nothing to stop you getting a job. But whether you can sustain it or not is going to be based upon having that structure and that routine in place before you go and get the job. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I mean, habits are huge for me on this show. And I think there's been a lot of research about it in the marketplace lately about the power of habits. Atomic Habits, James Clear's book, the the, the Charles Duhigg book, The Power of Habit, all those things, just setting structures in place and making behaviors automatic, which yes. takes time. But that kind of of pre-work makes a whole lot of other excellence possible, right? <laughs> to just to okay, yes, we, to we can get you a job, whether you're going to be able to 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 sustain it over time, over months and weeks, if you don't take care of these foundational things, mm-hmm. sleep, uh, personal care, all those kinds of things, it's going to be tough, and it's going to be a big transition. If you've been, again, going to bed at 2 a.m. and, you know, Mm. sleeping until 11. So what would you say the biggest hurdle to growth is for your clients? What what are you seeing that's that's holding a lot of people back that if you could just wave a magic wand, you would you would fix Um, your personal accountability would probably Mm -hmm. be the biggest one to sort of say, you know, it is, as we spoke before, about your choices and you're the one that has the the choice and instead of blaming other people for all of the things that are going on and what's happening to you to just take accountability for okay well this is what's happened i'm the one that's got the power to make the changes that i want for the future yeah and that in itself is such a powerful thing but so many people don't realize that they're the ones that hold the power to make the change i i can't cannot agree with that more because the we just see it 
it's it's prevalent if you don't believe that that's a case look at social media and what people are posting and what's going on in the world and it we seem to be having a crisis of personal accountability and and by the way it comes in in the way that people vote too and and do everything and i'm i'm not trying to get political and we're talking across country borders here so there're totally different issues going on but it seems to be something worldwide that people are trying to escape a level of personal accountability that that they want somebody else to take care of it and if i just do this or this candidate or that one is going to fix all my problems and remove the crabgrass from my lawn and and everything's going to be great if x y and z happens and you go but it there's no there's no focus on what you can do right now to 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 make this change that what what what's within yeah. your control yeah. and that and and you know even if we sit at the political sort of level of something i mean you know i speak i'm i'm quite a, a huge advocate for you know having your say and you know you speak to many people i know here in australia you, you know, okay well you know, they complain about what's going on in the political scene. I'm like, well, you know, you're the one that has the power to change that. Do you know who your local member is that you can go and go and have no? Like they only <laughs> like they, they don't understand the system right. that we have in the essence of, okay, well, I'll just point the finger at somebody and blame them because they happen to be the the you know the current leader of whatever the the situation yes. is. That's the person that happens to be, you know, on the television or on the newspaper. And, you know, they don't understand how the system works. They don't vote properly. And then, you know, it's like, well, once again, like you can't point the finger at somebody and say, okay, well, that person's responsible for everything if you don't understand how the system works and therefore, you know, don't, you, you you don't actually have your personal impact because you're not, you're not educated enough to be able to say, you know, this is this is what I'm doing and this is the impact that I'm actually personally making towards that outcome. Yes, yes, yes. And that's, I think, the the kind of crisis that, that we're having uh, across the world, and it's certainly, I guess, happening in Australia as well, is the fact that people want to point a finger, like you say, at, at whoever's on the television mm. without understanding that there are there are consequences and connections and trade-offs that that have to happen and somebody's trying to make a complicated decision mm. with the with the amount of feedback that they're getting and if you're not giving them the feedback if you're not on your local representative's call sheet about something that's impacting you that that mm. you care about if you're not letting them know somebody else is about what they care about that's exactly right <laughs> so i mean yeah. if if, if yeah. you you've got to you you got to make your presence known and be i mean not in a sense the squeaky wheel per se but if you've got an issue you need to to talk about it rather than just complain about it which is doing something about it because if you yeah. just want to sit there and complain, I mean, if you want to have a gripe session, go ahead, crack open a beer, do whatever you want, sit down at the pub, the bar, whatever, and solve the world's problems. Why, if I was in control, I'd do this. But understand that that there actually is something that, that you can do. So a couple more questions. I mean, I, I, I love to to talk about the concept of of being in the comfort zone, of, of, of people being stuck. And I think I... And uh, probably everybody else has has had those moments when, when you you feel like there's something that you could do, there's some some action that you could take, but you just feel stuck in 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 the position that you're in. That, well, I could, but I, I you know I I can't change my job because I've got kids and a house and a whatever, and I'm I'm paying for all these things, and I I can't deal with the uncertainty, and I've got to do this, and I'm just I'm kind of paralyzed into inaction. Mm. What what what's keeping people stuck? How can we get unstuck? How can we just you know grab the bull by the horn, so to speak, or or whatever aphorism we want to get into? How do we how do we start the process of making things better, leading a, a richer life and finding yeah, unicorns look, I think on the it's planet. about it's about working on the small things first. So if if you know changing the job like I hate my job and I want to do something different is at the the bottom of where we're at. 
but changing the job is just not possible right now. Work out what else it is in life that you can change that would support you to be, I guess, a little happier. And it's about mm-hmm. tapping in quite often to, you know, we've all got those unique gifts and tools and things that we, you know, we love to do. And quite often we're not doing any of those things. So it might be that you've got a passion <laughs> for, you know, doing something creative and you just oh, I don't have time to do that. But then I, I then you know, ask people, okay, well, actually keep keep a keep a sort of the list of what you spend your time on. And when we take out those things like, you know, having to, to cook meals or, you know, take the kids to sport or, you know, go to our, our everyday job, and we think about those other leisure hours of our day, quite often they're being wasted on things that are totally unresourceful. <laughs> And they're, it's, they're being wasted on this. They're being people are just in the in the continuous dopamine reward machine and not mm-hmm. focusing on the things that matter. I mean, that, yeah. again, right? The things that matter to you, make That's time for exactly those things. Right. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so you know, if if it's it's you know building your knowledge base and learning something new, or whether it's being creative, or whether it's just you know going for a run out in nature, or whatever it happens to be, that thing that makes you thrive, you need to add some more of that into your life because you know if there's parts of your life that you can't change due to your your current circumstances, I guarantee there's other parts of your life that you can change, and so those are the things that you can start to work on and then you know once you're feeling it 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 raises that level of energy that you have and that you know that that ability to now be out of that stuck position and go oh well look you know I can potentially change some of those other things as well because now I'm feeling better about myself and I'm actually enjoying my life well let's bring more things in that I enjoy Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic advice and some that I should probably adopt myself. (laughs) So a couple questions that I'll ask everybody before we close this out. What do you feel like the biggest fallacy is that everybody buys into, but that at the end of the day is just total hogwash? What's way overrated? This can be anything. This can be general in the entire world or it can be specific to your individual niche. What do you feel like is overrated? I don't know how often you get this answer, but I would say social media. Yep. <laughs> um, I think, you know, and just that whole celebrity thing, just looking at other people and judging yourself against them. And, you know, some of that's okay in the sense that if that inspires you to be something different and do something different that then relates to your own personal growth, then fantastic. But if you're using it as a comparison, and you're then feeling miserable because you feel that you could never reach the the potential of whatever it is that you're looking at, then yep. that's really unhealthy. Yes, yes. And I've talked about it, I think, time and time again on this show that you're you're comparing your inside to somebody's curated version of their outsides. Mm-hmm. That and that's a dangerous, slippery slope because you have no idea what's going on behind the curtain. Absolutely, you're just seeing what somebody's putting out for the world. Yep, a hundred percent. You know, the people that seem to have it all together and the most. You know, you imagine. You, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure Beyonce gets up and has a, a headache or has a bad hair day or has whatever. <laughs> Probably. But, you know, I'm not- there's plenty of people around that, that that support and look after that situation because, you know, the support structures are there. And so, you know, even even those people that have those those um, you know, bad situations, sometimes they've got so much support in place that we just don't ever see that. Right. Yes, yes. And I mean the, the you know, I, I think that social media has had a lot of untapped potential to break down barriers and instead it's it's done the opposite and mm. and form all these viewpoints inside the the heads of children and teenagers and adults that here's what a body should look like here's what people mm. should look like here's how you should be going out to every meeting and all the makeup tutorials and all this that that mm. that and, and behaviors <laughs> as well you know yeah. 
so many people just misbehave and say terrible things because they're sitting behind a, oh, a screen. Yes. And it's just like, you know what? You would never, ever say that to somebody in person. Just because you've got the safety of the, the computer screen doesn't mean that you still should be putting it out there. You know, I quite often think of the whole theory of if you can't say something nice, don't <sighs> say anything at all. We've yeah, we've lost that completely in the world of social media. Just people <laughs> yeah. go off and say whatever they want because it's anonymity, right? That's right. And my opinion screen. is is right. You know, just because I believe in this, then I have a right to be able to say what I think. Yep. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the way that you portray that information definitely sometimes can get skewed. Yes, yes. But I think it's it's starting to bleed over into our daily lives where people are starting to lose the ability to actually be sociable, especially mm. since the pandemic and all this, and we were at home and we all went feral, that, <laughs> that, 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 that there's this, that we're losing the ability to, to take in alternate viewpoints and to accept anything that, or have a discussion even just mm. a, a, a compassionate, passionate discussion about something to, to talk to somebody who has a different point of view and talk about it instead of just, I can't listen to this guy, cancel cancel him, oh. cancel her, I don't want to hear it, yeah. I, la, 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 not listening. So <laughs> on, the, on the other side of it, what do you think is the most underrated concept? What are people overlooking? What are, what are people missing? Oh, the flip side of what we just spoke about, so that personal connection and understanding that other people have a different perspective and actually going and seeking that other perspective and being open to it and saying, you know what, I didn't know that that was a thing and please tell me more about it. So you've actually got the opportunity to learn rather than just saying, Bleep, I don't want to know. It doesn't yep. fit in with my little picture of, of the way that I like life to actually go and experience different things, learn about people because all of these things that we judge people for, Quite often, if you actually learnt a little bit more about that person's situation, you would suddenly realise that, well, you're judging the outside and what's happening on the inside is totally different. Yep. Yep. Totally agree. Fiona, thank you so much for joining me. Folks, if you want to know more about Fiona, check out her website, fionademarc.com.au. Connect with her on social media and consider subscribing to her newsletter. Links to everything are in the show notes as always. And until next time, we don't have a problem. We have an opportunity to get unstuck, to build resilience, to lead better lives, and to be happier, healthier, wealthier, wiser, and all those things. Thanks again. Have a great one. Bye-bye.